Hi guys, so I'm making a quick video just uh, to show you the basics on your new XP60. Uh, it's the same thing as the XP61, so if you bought that one, it's the exact same one. I already attached this to it, I found it really useful. Um, it, act it actually does make your camera float, so this will stay on top and your camera will float like this underneath the water. Um, so if you didn't get this with your camera, I would suggest getting one just in case you drop it in the water. It just makes it um, that much more comfortable to carry it around. Anyways guys, um, the first thing you want to do is open up your battery slot. So we're just going to open that up. So you just press this button right here, like so, and you open it up. So there's your battery. If you didn't put it in, you should put it in by now. Um, so I'm just going to open it up. So I just click this down and the battery comes up. Okay, same thing for your memory card. It goes right here. So you just have to press on it and it will pop up. Okay, so I've got a 32 gig right here. If you're going to do videos, I would suggest getting a 32 gig for sure. So there we go. We popped it in. So once you close it, make sure there's nothing in the way in the sides. This part gets tends to go right here and it gets in the way from closing properly. So always make sure that there's nothing in the way. There's no hairs around it, nothing, uh, not even dust around it because that will make water leak into it. Uh, the camera does have a sensor and it will give you a little warning. However, um, you might still get water in it. So just be careful with that. Uh, anyways, so you don't have to press the button again. So you can just turn it to lock it and you're going to hear that locking sound. So then it's locked. So um, the first feature I'm going to show you guys about the camera. It's very simple how to turn it on. So you just press this button right here. Okay, so it might give you this warning. So to get over that, just press this button right here. Okay, and you're ready to take a picture. Okay, so the first things that you might want to set with your camera, and I suggest doing so, if you want the highest res pictures that you want, just press your menu button. Okay, and then you're going to get your image sizes. So let's start off with your images. So once you click on it, always press this button to click on it. Um, you do want the highest res that you can get on it. Um, this is not for all people. If you're going to print your pictures on 4x6 paper, which is really normal, you don't need the 60 megapixel, which is this one, full frame. makes your pictures a bit more squarish. You do want to take it 3, 2. Okay, that's your ratio of your picture. If you take your pictures at 3, two, um, three to 2, um, that would be perfect to print as a 4x6 or almost any standard size, okay, if you guys want to print in the end your pictures. Um, it also looks good on Facebook. Anyways, um, this would be the highest one, 60 megapixel, uh, 4 to 3. Um, 60 megapixel is good if you want to, uh, for example, print a poster size of your pictures. So if you want to print your pictures really big, uh, set it as that. Or else if you're just going to view them on Facebook, on your computer, iPhone, iPad, um, you can go from 14 and down. I would not go less than 8 megabyte. Okay, uh, 8 megabytes is good enough for 4x6s or any other. Uh, other than that, if you want to print, uh, for example, a poster, I wouldn't really do 8 megapixel. However, you can still print them and they'll still look good. For poster, you don't want the biggest one, which is 4 to 3. So that's what I have it set mine as. Um, image quality. This is actually better just to put it as fine. Okay? So no matter if you put it 8 megapixel, just put that as fine. Um, okay. So you can put it from here to black and white sepia. So all your pictures will be taken black and white in sepia. Um, just put standard for color which is most people would do that okay uh, your white balance is good as auto and your continuous shutter um, this one I would just leave it as is that's this button right here okay to take several pictures at a time so let's just leave that as is now your movie AF mode uh, you want to continuous for sure you don't want to just center it um, that's just for focusing purposes. Uh, okay, your movie mode. So, 
that's the best resolution you can have at uh, 1080 60 flips per second which is really good now if you want to do a movie that's slow motion okay if you want to edit it on Final Cut Pro later on or any uh, video editing software and you want to make it slow-mo the best that you can do is this 160 flips per second or 240 is really good for slow motion um, of course as you can see the resolution would be much lower 320 by 120 is pretty low however slow motion would look great on it um, other than that at 60 flips per second it's still good okay so you can still do low slow motion from there but it just won't be as good as your 240 or 160 uh, but you are trading off the resolution anyway so we're just gonna set it as that so remember always press the menu button which is okay as well so I'm just scrolling down by pressing these just in case that's up and down and sideways just to get into the to the menus so I'm just scrolling down so we set this up already um, you do want your shooting mode to be at okay to get into that I just press the, um, the menu OK button okay so from here you can just scroll down and up by pressing these buttons once again and we're just gonna look at auto this is the best one that you can do okay the scene recognition this is pretty smart it does know if you wanna take um, a landscape picture underwater whichever it does detect it it doesn't 100% of the time work so you do wanna set it up yourself uh, when you're going underwater for example you want to scroll down to take a nice picture underwater or video you want to set it so for that you just press OK on that if you want to set it for underwater uh, for now we're not gonna set it for underwater I'm just going to show you the different features that it has uh, such as your 3d it does guide you how to do that you can just press OK on that uh, by itself it will not go to 3D or panorama panorama will basically guide you and you will have to take a picture um, it takes several pictures so you have to move your camera side to side to take pictures um, let me just show you that that's right here too, 360 degree so it puts those pictures together for you um, the iPhone 4s and iPhone 5 ha have almost the exact same type of feature in it that's what I've noticed so if you've done that this will be pretty easy for you anyways we're gonna get out of this for now so I'm just gonna press the backspace um, and then backspace again okay to go back to your normal so right now since it's pretty dark this is detecting okay now it doesn't detect that it's dark anymore since I turned on my computer and it does detect that there's sufficient light okay Anyways, uh, going back to this, you want to format your card for sure. If you don't have any pictures on it, by formatting it, you're going to erase all your data. So we're just going to press menu again. And we're going to press this button right here on the side. So it makes this go to the side. Okay. And we're going to press down. So just press this down. Okay. And this is your settings. So we're just going to press this to the side okay so there you can set your date and time now in date and time I don't suggest um, messing around with it too much it's good to just set it up once and that's it um, your time is different language there you have your silent mode off so you hear that beeping sound you can turn it off if you don't like it it gets annoying for you now you can reset the whole configuration just by tapping on this which I will not do um, something else that you want to do is format your card like I said this will erase all your images plus it will format it so it works perfect with this camera so I'm just gonna click on that and here it does tell you that it raises all your data that means all your pictures so I'm just gonna press OK and there it's formatting my card okay so I'm just gonna go back to it I'm gonna go to settings again and I'm just gonna show you the rest Okay, this is your shutter volume. All those volumes you can mess around with. Uh, your playback volume. Uh, your brightness, same thing. Uh, this has auto brightness. So if it detects that it's dark, your screen will be a little bit um, actually darker. And when it's really sunny, it'll come up brighter so you can actually see the screen. So I would just leave that on always. Um, red eye removal. That, I would leave it on for most people just because there's a lot of red eyes on, on pictures. Uh, the red eye usually just fires a flash before. 
uh, it takes the actual picture so you don't get the red eye um, intelligent digital zoom okay that's a good one always have that off um, this is because if you put it on the digital zoom it's not a real zoom it just pixelizes your picture so in basic words it makes your pictures look a little bit less resolution so the resolution would go down if you turn it on and if you actually use it okay so just leave it off um, if you want to zoom in on something just do it from your computer it's the exact same thing that this does but in a lower quality so don't do that um, movie zoom type same thing just leave it as an optical you don't want to mess with your digital since that just lowers the resolution once again um, so same thing from here um, you can also mess around with your intelligent zoom um, your guidance display that's good because it just tells you what you're doing on your camera so I will always leave that on until you get really used to it and you don't need it anymore so for now I have that turned on so to take a picture you basically just press it halfway and then press it once you hear that click sound that means it focused and take it all the way so you press it all the way okay for video you just wanna click this and it'll start taking your video okay the red button for zooming you have these two buttons right here so I'm just gonna zoom in so let's put my optical zoom and then you wanna once you zoom then you do wanna focus it so there's my focus let me just uh, brighten this up so you can focus Okay, with regular cameras, one more thing. If you do get some graininess on um, on your pictures, you notice that? That's because you took it either without a flash on, it was kind of dark, or... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It was kind of dark, and then you took a picture, it might come out grainy, or you might get movement on your camera. So just be aware of that. Um, graininess is very common with cameras. With DSLRs, you can handle that and um, kind of take it away. But that just gets more into cameras. Anyways, guys, that's your basics for this camera. Um, remember, if you want to take close-up shots, you just have to press right here on the side. And you can set it um, for various other modes. Um, one more mode I'm going to show you. So I'm just going to go into modes. If you're taking a close-up of flowers and such, you do always want to set it up as flower for example um, and there's actually another one but the flower one's the best one for close-up shots I'm gonna get out of this okay uh, one more thing your flash I forgot about that um, for now I just have my flash off but you can put it in auto red eye re reduction which I suggest doing that I'm um, not just having it as force flash and especially for night pictures you want that on for me I always have it off so I do not want the flash it's very harsh and sometimes it doesn't make the pictures that look that good anyways if you guys have any questions comments any more guidance about this product or any product Mac product or cameras just uh, leave me your, hear your message and I'll get back to you thank you don't forget to rate and subscribe